Jake Sherman and is the co-author of Political Playbook, and he joins us now. Jake, good to see you. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, let me ask you. Um, Hillary Clinton is obviously beginning to focus on some of these down ballot races, both in her speeches with spending. Is there any chance, though, that she might be overreaching? I mean, she still has to win the presidency. I mean, the, the, the data is pretty baked in at this point. She's uh, leading in basically every state she needs to lead in to win the election. And I think there's a real opportunity for her in states like, uh, you know, in states like Arizona and states like Texas and states like North Carolina uh, uh, to help members of, uh, you know, to help some of these down ballot races that are, are, are getting tight. Now, listen, I, I don't think she's going to completely abandon her own message and her own uh, uh, push for the White House, but it is important. I mean, the presidency is a relatively weak institution without some help in Congress. And uh, I think we're at that point in the race, you know, 15 days out, where she thinks she can make a difference. But we're even hearing that, you know, President Obama uh, plans to endorse about 150 down ballot Democrats. He's a really important uh, surrogate for her. What do you make of this decision to sort of go all the way and go all in when it comes to the down ballots? What Republicans are telling me is that, you know, they expect to lose between uh, 15, 10 and 20 seats in the House. And uh, if you lose, if Republicans think they could lose 20 seats, then that really means they could take back the majority. So uh, President Obama is trying to capitalize on that, trying to put his heft behind some of these down ballot candidates that uh, wouldn't otherwise have a chance. And I think it's going to be effective in some spots. He's already filming some uh, television ads and doing calls for some candidates. And those kinds of things are important to gin up enthusiasm with like two weeks left until Election Day. And Jake, on the same topic, uh, should she really be putting surrogates and resources into traditionally red states like Arizona and Texas when some of the swing states like Florida and Ohio are still relatively tight? Or is it thinking that the map looks safe enough to make a play for those other states? I think she thinks the map looks safe enough. I, I mean, Donald Trump doesn't need to win just Ohio or just Florida or just North Carolina. He pretty much needs to win all of these states. So I, I think the Clinton campaign is seeing, uh, you know, four-point races in places like Arizona, where she's up three or four points, and Texas, where she's down three or four points, where she could make a play. I, I think, to be fair, she's not really doing a ton in Texas. She's spending a minimal amount of money, but in Arizona, she's sent, you know, top surrogates like Michelle Obama, and uh, I, I think that's going to make, that could make a difference in these, you know, last days of the campaign. In states like Florida, she's not comfortably ahead, but she has had kind of a sustained lead in the state. So I think once you see two or three weeks of having a lead in the state, you could start opening up the map and trying other, uh, trying other options out. So, Jake, let's talk about the speech that Donald Trump made on Saturday. He was supposed to be outlining his first 100 days in office, what he would do, and, and he did, and he did that well, except it was completely overshadowed by his threat to sue all the women who accused him of sexual harassment. Didn't he miss an opportunity here? He probably did, and it's kind of an, an encapsulation of his campaign. Um, what Republicans are telling us is that if he had o if he had only stuck to the message, uh, you know, that he had tried to uh, talk about for the entire campaign and nothing else, this would be an entirely different race. But he's gotten into things like, you know, uh, a, a former beauty queen's uh, weight gain. He's talking about suing women who have accused him of, of sexual misconduct. And he just veers off, and that's what gets the attention. So it's absolutely a missed opportunity. He had set this kind of grand situation of, of uh, uh, Gettysburg on a Saturday and had a huge crowd, and then talked about things that have no bearing on the election, which is only a couple weeks away. So it's, it's a curious strategy, to be sure. Mm -hmm. and, and Jake, curiouser still, I wonder what insiders are saying about this interview that Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, did yesterday was she acknowledged that Donald Trump is behind. Uh, she said in ad spending and popular surrogates like President Obama and the First Lady give Secretary Clinton an advantage. She's also been busted a couple of times tweeting uh, things that don't really seem to support her candidate. They sort of seem to just support her, her abilities as a pollster and a, and a campaign strategist. What are you hearing? 
I mean, I, I think that what what most people, the, she's basically saying what nearly everybody thinks, and this isn't a complicated situation. Donald Trump is down between four and 12 points in every poll that's come out that has any sort of ounce of credibility. So to the extent that Donald Trump goes on, on Twitter after a debate and says that he won the debate despite uh, a, a mountain of evidence to the contrary, and he could say he's winning all he wants, but uh, I think Kellyanne Conway is looking past November yeah. 8th uh, when she has a career that she needs to resume and she's going to need clients and she's going to need to run a business again. And uh, to the extent that she says her candidate is winning when anybody who has any idea of what's going on or who could read numbers uh, would say the opposite. I think that that I think that she's just acknowledging a reality. And let's talk about this sort of drip, drip, drip of uh, Clinton campaign emails uh, from WikiLeaks. We saw in Nancy's piece, she talked a little bit about this. So far, no smoking gun, mostly sort of embarrassing insider information. But the threat that there may be a bombshell coming, is that sort of the biggest concern for the Clinton campaign now? I think they're very, obviously, very, very concerned about that. I think that that is a real risk. Um, these are folks that have hacked into an email server, so they obviously have some uh, a savvy with technology. They've not said that they have a big bombshell that they'll release. If they had a big bombshell that they wanted to release, they probably need to do it in the next couple days because. Um, uh, people are already voting. Uh, Hillary Clinton already has a, uh, what appears to be a substantial lead in critical states like Nevada and Florida, which are already kind of con conducting absentee and early voting. Uh, but you're right, there hasn't been a bombshell. There have been embarrassing instances of how the Clintons conduct business and how campaign business is conducted. But you're right, no bombshells uh, thus far. All right, Jake Sherman, co-author of The Political Playbook. We appreciate the time. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys.